yeah what's up YouTube so I just want to talk about some like I guess I would consider it like bigger picture stuff more like meta stuff in terms of how to pick up women and um, this is more what I teach my advanced students but if you're new to this game you know follow along hang out and um, you know maybe learn something so um, basically picking up women is I, and I a lot of people they just think oh okay what's your pickup line and I try to tell people like it's I don't do pickup lines it's not about that it's actually about becoming a better version of yourself becoming a more attractive version of you making it like me turning myself into Ryan 2.0 becoming that newer better version that that um, more interesting that 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 guy who's got a little bit more money, who's got a nicer car, who's got a nicer house, like just a better catch for women from where I was, let's say, from yesterday or five years from now or, you know, 10 years ago, whatever. I'm sipping on, uh, I got some coffee right here, some uh, Pete's coffee, by the way, in case you were wondering what's in this cup. Um, no rum and coke, no Hennessy today. It's kind of early. It's about... Um, six o'clock in the evening just waking up you know getting coffee making some YouTubes doing what I do so basically what I like to do is it's like about creating a lifestyle for yourself creating uh, and and maintaining and implementing certain systems and once you have those systems in place then the women will just come to you. So instead, like, when you're at the very beginning level in this game, yeah, it's about learning the conversational skills, learning social savvy, learning, like, witty, funny humor and comeback lines and pickup lines and, oh, okay, like, you know, elements of how to approach women, like, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to go over and talk to that girl. Most guys can't even do that. A lot of girls sometimes they're like, wait, you teach guys how to pick up women. Like, how do you do that? What's your pickup line? I say, like, well, it's it's a bit more complicated like than that. They don't just pay me like two grand to, to give them a pickup line. It's more like taking a person and figuring out how we can make them again that that next level up, that better version of themselves so that they don't have to use stupid pickup lines so that they actually just become a more attractive man and so women start to find them attractive so one of the questions I get a lot is well shouldn't you just be yourself and that's a great question so you definitely should be yourself and if that's working for you more power to you but there's a lot of guys out there who aren't getting girls and they've been being themselves their whole life and girls just don't like them so if that's you it's time to change you gotta be someone else you gotta become not not completely I mean you can't become another person but you can change in a way you can think differently about certain things you can change certain habitual habits and behavior patterns and anything like that you know, people, uh, I, I used to bite my nails. Okay, that's just who I was. I always bit my nails. But when I got into Instagram modeling and things like that, one of the first things I learned from some mentors, and they were like, supermodels do not bite their nails. And it was like, oh, like, well, I want to be a model, so I don't bite my nails. And anytime my nails get long now, I get the clippers. It's just a habit now. Before, I used to just bite my nails. That's, that's me being myself, right? But biting your nails isn't really attractive. It's more attractive to grab the clippers and clip them or go out and pay $35 and get a professional manicure. And that's just who I am now. Anytime my nails start getting long, I walk down to the Asian spa down the street and I get a mani-pedi. I get the, 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 it's like $55 for, for both. And that's just who I am now. That's the new version of me. So... Obviously, this game is, I'm not talking about, pit, pit, you know, fixing your nails or whatever like that. That's definitely part of it, I would say, because women do look at a guy's fingernails. When a woman sees your, your fingers and they are nice and clean, it gives her an insight into, okay, 
he takes care of himself, he knows how to groom himself, and if his fingernails look nice, his toes probably look nice. Most guys, they, most guys have never got a pedicure. I suggest every guy get pedicures. I mean, at least, at least once a month, minimum once a month, if not every two weeks. Like women, they have to get them every week because their feet are exposed. They wear open-toed shoes. Most guys wear boots or tennis shoes. So, you know, you don't really need to do it every week, but if you want a girl to be sucking your toes, like look down at your toes and be like, wow, like, I mean, would you suck on your toes? If your fucking toes are nasty and like you got like ingrown toenails and toe jam, like, yeah, you probably need a pedicure. Like you, you need, it, part of being attractive to women is knowing how to groom yourself. If you have a beard, for example, it means not growing out like a big hillbilly beard. You could give that beard some style. You could cut it, you could shape it, you could make sure that it's not like, you know, if you're one of those guys who's like, we call them salt and peppers when they're kind of like getting a little gray in their beard. Yeah, go ahead and get that fucking hair dye and make your beard one color, either gray or go back to dark or whatever. Me, for example, my, my, my beard grows out red. It comes from my dad's side. And um, if I actually grow this out, by the time it gets to here, I'll, it'll be like, you know, my hair is naturally brunette and then my beard will be like, basically like a redhead. So it doesn't look good on me. So I never, I could grow out a beard, I just never do. Sometimes I'll leave a little bit of stubble just because it's kind of edgy. But again, it depends what kind of girl you're getting. A lot of guys, they say, well, should I grow out a beard? Will that help me get girls? Well, it'll help you get girls that like guys with beards. It won't help you get girls in general. Some girls only go for clean shaven guys. The real purpose of a beard is, is like to basically give your jawline a little more shape. If your jaw is very round rather than square, square jaw is what women find attractive. If your jaw is more round, then you can grow out a beard and shape it to make your jaw more sharp and make your head more square. Women appear, like they, they want guys with square heads, just like men want women with round heads, not like ovaled faces. Or if your face is asymmetrical, meaning like, you know, one side of your face is different than the other. Let's say you have a big scar or something right here on your face. You can cover it with the beard, right? You cover it up with the beard and then it will make your face appear to be more symmetrical. So you could use it in certain ways uh, in order to generate more attraction from women. And then if your face is, you know, my face is pretty normal. There's, it's not changed on, on from side to side and I just look better, clean shaven. That's why I generally am. If I'm dating a girl and she's like, you know, oh, well, could you grow out a beard? Like, I think that would be hot. Yeah, I could. It's not a big deal. Uh, but generally, when I'm clean shaven, I'm just gonna attract girls that like clean shaven guys. And I remember when I did grow out a beard, it attracted more of the type of girls who like the outdoorsy, you know, lumberjack type of guys. And I'm not really into those type of girls anyway, so I'd rather just be myself in, in that regards. But anyway, going into like bigger picture type of stuff. Like I said, it's not about when you first start, sure. Okay, go try this pickup line. I don't know, let me let me give you an example of of one of the pickup lines that I use. So, let's say um, you're a new student. I will say, okay, I want you to use my six nine pickup opener. And they go, okay, what's that? And I say, you see that group of girls? You're gonna walk up to them, and you guys, you're gonna go, hey guys. I need a quick female opinion. Do you guys know the rapper 6ix9ine? And then the girls are gonna go, yeah. And you go, do you guys think he's hot? And the girls will go, no. Or they're gonna go, yeah, he's fine. Like, whatever, whatever they say doesn't really matter. You go, okay, well get this. My little niece, she's seven years old. And I guess she's in love with 6ix9ine. She's got a giant poster of him on the wall. She says when she grows up, she's gonna marry him. What do you guys think about that? And so you allow the girls to respond, oh my God, that's so crazy, blah, blah, blah. Right, that's the pickup line. In fact, I don't call it a pickup line, I call it a routine. It's just something that's memorized in my head. And so anytime I see some girls, I can walk up and go, hey, do you guys know that rapper 6ix9ine? 
okay, get this, my little niece, right? And I go into the story. And that basically just starts the conversation. So it's fun to use techniques like that when you first start out. Like, okay, go use this pickup line. Go, go, go talk to that girl using the 6-9 opener. Go ask her if she thinks he's hot and then tell her about your niece. And that'll start the conversation. And after you get into the conversation, then you just transition into something more casual. Like, so anyway, what are you guys up to tonight? What are you guys celebrating? What are you guys drinking? Oh, is that Budweiser? Cheers, right? Hey, um, anyway, but I, I saw you and I thought you were kind of cute and blah, blah, blah. You take the conversation somewhere else. So it's fun to do that at first on the, on the basic beginner level. But when you really get into this game, it's more about creating a life that's worthy of attracting those type of beautiful women so that you don't have to go out and use stupid pickup lines. The women will come to you. So, for example, when you first get into this game, a lot of guys, you know, maybe they're in their teens, early 20s. Some guys are even in their, you know, 30s and 40s, still living at home with their mom, still living, you know, down in the basement, hanging out, you know, a little Minecraft, a little fucking... A little, a little World of Warcraft, you know, hanging out watching Netflix all day, just, you know, beating the meat and um, probably drinking some beers or some high C or Capri Sun or eating cheese and crackers, whatever the fuck they're doing. Just hanging out on Reddit all day, you know, trolling. They don't have a life. Like, they're losers. They don't have anything going on in their life. They don't have a job. They don't have anything that would make a woman go, wow, like, this is a responsible man with a job who can um, he's strong he's got muscles he can protect and provide for me and our potential offspring if you have if, it, if we had kids together so women are basically looking at those type of guys going I don't care if he's a nice guy like I don't care if he would treat me nice he's not a man that I would date okay he lives with his mom he he lives in a basement he doesn't have a job he can't if we move in together, he can't pay the rent. So she's looking at this guy over here who's got his life together. A guy who's, you know, goes to the gym. He's JTT, I like to say, jacked, tanned, and tatted, right? He's got nice muscles. So she knows that if uh, a guy tries to mess with her, that um, he can fight, he can protect, he can defend her. And she says, oh, he's got a nice job. He's got a lot of money. He can pay the rent. He can support himself, me and our baby, okay, that's a guy that I want to date, right? And you over here, the guy who's just learning pickup, still lives with his mom, she's like, yeah, no, I want this guy. So when you learn pickup, it's really about becoming this guy. Now, when you first start, sure, yeah, go use the 6-9 pickup line. Go try to talk to those girls and see if you can get a conversation and Maybe you can get a number and maybe you can get a date. You might even get laid. And that's really good. That's a good place to start if you're just getting into it. But as you're doing that, the main thing is to try to become this high value guy. So when you're not going out picking up in terms of, of, of working on your game, you're working on the other part of your game, which is like, okay, I'm going to start living this type of lifestyle. I'm going to, I'm going to start getting up in the morning and going to the gym and work on getting my muscles. And so in the, in the next two or three years, you will be that jacked guy. And that's happening in the, in the background, right? It's on the back burner. So you start living this life, you start building these systems. So now three times a week for an hour a day, you're going to the gym. And that's just become a part of your life. And then you're like, you know what? I'm gonna start working on the money aspect too. I'm going to I'm going to go get that job even if it's fucking McDonald's. I'm going to I'm just going to I'm going to go put in an application to McDonald's just so I can start getting some income in and then I can work on building my own business in the meantime. But at least you've got some kind of paycheck even if it's just 15 bucks an hour and you know you're working part-time which is whatever whatever's 15 times 20, I don't know, 3 400 bucks or something like that. So you're getting after taxes probably like 200 and whatever so let's let's say you're making 200 bucks a week that's 800 bucks a month now all right so now you've got 800 dollars a month coming in you're working 20 hours a week and you're going to the gym three times a week so now you got a little bit of money and you're working on a little bit of muscle and then of course there's health 
wealth, relationships, and lifestyle. So what you're creating is that lifestyle. You're working on your health because you're going to the gym. You're working on your wealth because you're starting to get a job and get some money. And then your relationships. You want to be that guy who has the great relationships with his friends, with his family. It, you know, if you're the guy who's um, kind of a follower and you just kind of go with the crowd and you know, you're calling up your buddy Jake. Hey, Jake, what are we doing tonight? And Jake's the one telling you we're going to this concert. You're like, okay, cool. So Jake's kind of the leader, right? And you're like a follower in your little social circle. Well, you want to work on becoming the leader of your social circle. You want to be the guy who's calling the shots. You want to be the shot caller. You want to be the guy that Jake is calling up and saying, hey, bro, what are we doing tonight? And you're like, you know what? We're going out to this party. Hey, you know what? We're having a pool party or a barbecue at my place. That's what's going down. Be there, be square. Like that kind of thing. You want to be the guy calling the shots. You want to be the top dog in your little social circle. And you want to have great relationships with your with your friend with not just your friends, but your family. Good relationship with your mom, with your dad, with your uncles, with your cousins. And you also want to be working your social media. And you want to basically have good pictures of yourself with these friends and family to let the girls know oh wow like this guy um he's got an active social life you want to take the pictures of you in the gym working out and put them on your social media so girls can go oh wow like yeah this guy works out he takes care of himself i can respect that you want to buy some stuff with the mcdonald's money like a nice bracelet or a watch, take a picture and put it on Instagram so that girls can see, okay, this guy's got money. So now what you see a bigger picture from the girl's perspective, she starts to say, okay, and when she's scrolling through your Instagram feed, she can instantly see, okay, this guy's got money. This guy's in good shape. He's taking care of himself. He goes to the gym. He's got good relationships with his friends and family. It looks like he's working on starting his own business. Wow. All of a sudden, you start becoming that guy, and that's the guy that the girls want. So now she's like, huh, this guy's kind of a catch. Like, you, when she looked at you when you were here, instant no. But now you're starting to get here, so she gives you that maybe category. Like, huh, I don't know. Like, I mean, if I guess if he asked me out to go get a coffee, I, yeah, I, I guess I would go. Right? So you're starting to put these systems in place. A little time has gone by now, so you're not, you're not here anymore. You're over here. It's been like, I don't know, six months or a year. You've been practicing going out and approaching women and learning how to get good conversations and getting some phone numbers. And you've had a couple dates and maybe a few successes. Maybe you've had sex with, after six months, I don't know, three or four girls or something like that. It's a lot better than it was when you were here, right? Now you've had a couple lays might even had a girl that you dated a couple times but over the course of that six months you've been going to the gym three times a week you you got that mcdonald's money so now you got a nice watch and um you've been uh putting some money in the in your savings account and you're working on moving out of your mom's basement and getting your first apartment a nice just studio apartment 300 400 bucks a month it's not much but at least now you're out on your own and you're working on getting a car. Right now you're probably still taking the bus to McDonald's. But you're working on getting a, I don't know, a cheap 94 Honda Civic, right? Barely runs 250,000 miles, but at least now you have a car, you have a job, and you have your own spot where you can bring a girl back to. It's not much, but it's a lot better than it was when you were here. So 6 months down the road or a year down the road, you're on your path to becoming that guy. So, when you look at this from a big picture perspective, this is the real game. It's about becoming, it's about going from zero to hero. It's about becoming that guy. So several months down the road, you got your car, you got your apartment, you got um, a little bit of money in the bank, you're starting to build some muscles, you're starting to build up your social media profile because girls will look at the amount of followers. And if they've got more followers than you, a girl's got 50,000 followers and you got 20 followers, I'm going to tell you, she doesn't give a fuck about you. And girls want guys on their level or above. Women are hypergamous. They're always going for the bigger, better deal. They always date across and up, meaning they want a guy on their level or above their level. And if you're below their level, 
They're not interested. Most guys don't understand that. They think, well, I was nice to her. I bought her flowers. I bought her chocolates. I got her concert tickets, front row seats to, to you know, her favorite music artist. And at the end of the night, she just said she wanted to be friends. And, you know, she had a boyfriend, right? It's because you're not on her level or above. That is the attraction. She's attracted because you're on her level or above her. She thinks, wow, this guy's doing better than me. I've only got 50,000 followers and he's got 100,000. Wow, that's hot. See, that is the attraction. It's not like when men look at a woman and we go, I like her because what she looks like, her, her beautiful body, her beautiful face, her bright blue eyes, her, her shiny hair, right? Oh, the way she dresses, so her legs look so sexy in that outfit. That turns me on. What she looks like is the attraction. But to women, it's the guy's level of social status, how much money he's got. It, it, his, his looks definitely come into play too. In fact, the looks can even be more powerful. The girl may, may look at the guy and go, I don't, I don't care that he doesn't have a lot of money. He is so good looking. But let's leave that lesson for another day because most of the guys, any, anyone who's watching this video is not that good looking guy. You're probably an average Joe or below, which means you can't depend on your looks anyway. Doesn't matter. You have to focus on building your social status and your money, level of clout, your, you know, your swag, your game, your personality. You got to work on your level of humor. You got to learn how to be confident, charismatic in the moment, become more extroverted than introverted. You can't be in your head all the time. You got to learn how to talk to people and, you know, chat up women. You got to work on the personality aspect of your game. Don't even, if, if you're just focused on being the guy who's good looking and you're not good looking, there's nothing you can do about that. A lot of guys, they're, they're always asking like, well, can I go to the gym and get better looking? Yeah, you can lose fat going to the gym, but you can't work out your face. You can't go to the gym and get taller. So in terms of like what you have based on your genetics you can't change your genetics you have what you got that's just that's the roll of the dice you know if you didn't win the genetic lottery it sucks to be you it's just what I didn't do it 90% of guys didn't do it that's why 90% of guys are not really getting laid and they have to work on becoming that guy in order to get laid and then there's those 10% of guys who are extremely good looking who just women are just like oh my god he's so hot I want to fuck him and they don't have to do any of this stuff. They don't have to be rich. They don't have to have social status. They don't have to be like, they don't have to have game or personality. They can be very boring, bland people, but because they're so good looking, women will flock to them. But like I said, that's only 10% of guys. The other 90% of us doesn't matter. If, if the, the other 90% of us want to get any, any piece of the, of the pussy pie, then we need to work on our game. We need to play this long game. It's just the way that it is. So let's go back to that bigger picture for a second. So let's imagine now it's two years since you started this game, probably approached hundreds of women. You got some phone numbers here and there, you got a couple of lays, but over the course of that two years, you were going to the gym three times, four times a week, five times a week. You upgraded your McDonald's job hopefully after two years you probably got maybe you maybe from McDonald's now you're working at like UPS or FedEx and now instead of like 15 bucks an hour you're making 20 22 an hour so you're making a little bit more money your studio apartment which is just basically you know your one room and your kitchenette and a bathroom you probably pipped that out by now you've had time to get a few paychecks you've got you know a nice leather couch in there you've got a big screen TV You've got, uh, you probably have some credit cards by at that time, so you've been able to charge up uh, a couple things on your credit card, basically get like a nice, you know, DVD player, got a nice MacBook, you got, um, you know, the new iPhone, you got, you got all, you got all the nice toys to pimp out your little studio apartment, you know, it's maybe small, maybe it's only like, I don't know, four or five hundred square feet, but it's pimped out, everything's nice, 
you know, your place is clean, you've got food in the cupboards, you got food in the fridge, you know, fresh milk, eggs, cereal. If a girl comes over to your house, she looks in your house and she goes, that's nice and clean. Girl opens your fridge. She doesn't just see, you know, a light bulb and, you know, a box of baking soda in there. She goes, oh, wow, like there's milk, there's eggs, there's cheese, hot dogs, there's some beer, there's some soda. Okay, so the guy's got a job, he's got money. The girl goes in your bathroom and she's like, okay, the, the girl, girls will look at your toilet, behind the toilet where those little bolts are. And if there's like dust and piss, you're going to creep them out. you got to clean that motherfucking toilet. So she's going to go in your bathroom, she's going to look behind the toilet, she's going to open your medicine cabinet. She's going to make sure that you're not on all kinds of pills and shit like that. So if you are, hide that shit. Um, she's going to look at your medicine cabinet. Hopefully you've got some condoms in there. So she's going to be like, okay, like he's normal, sexually active guy. Okay, I'm not creeped out. Bathroom is clean. Toilet's clean. Wow, he even has the blue, like, water in the toilet. Hmm. Okay. Nothing to turn her off so far. She, you know, you probably have a, you know, your leather couch or your futon bed or whatever. She's like, oh, it doesn't have cum stains all over it. It looks clean. It looks like he washes his sheets. That's good. She doesn't see like a cum sock sitting, you know, on the side of the couch. Like got one stray sock that you bust a nut in. And she's like, okay, like no cum socks. Hmm. Right? Your floor is clean and vacuumed. Got a vacuum in the corner, I, 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 would, I would hope. And, um... You, you have money, so you're able to pay for Netflix and Hulu subscriptions and things like that. YouTube Red or whatever, YouTube Premium. So you can actually sit down and, and watch some movies together, you know, on Amazon or whatever. Oh, you want to watch this movie? Go on Amazon, get your movie, click instant download. She's like, okay, so he's got credit cards, got a job, got money, he's able to download movies. You're in shape. You've been working out for two years. Maybe you got those six-pack abs, bulging biceps. You got, you know, your lats, your your traps, your obliques. You, you know, nice big fucking quads. Like you're starting to look jacked. You're looking in shape. You're eating cleaner. Spinach, broccoli, blueberries, superfoods. You're watching your macronutrients. You're you know, protein shakes, creatine, supplements, all that stuff is, is all part of your health game. So she sees that through your body and she's like, okay, like the guy's in, he's in decent shape. He's not like some fat fuck. Doesn't look like a fucking slob. Um, you know, you, you shaved or at least, you know, if you grow up facial hair, you have a nice style. Your haircut looks clean. You don't have like hair growing over the ears and things like that. You know, your nails look good. She sees, you know, your fingernails are, are like clean. You smell good. You got a nice cologne on. So she, when she's sitting next to you, she you, she doesn't smell body funk or BO or smell like your fucking musty pits. Like she's, she's like, hmm. Like, what are you wearing? You're like, oh, that's curve. And she's like, hmm, okay. You smelling nice? I reckon curve is, curve is nice. I usually wear Paris Hilton for men. That's, that's kind of my go-to chill cologne. Um... Gucci, Angel, there's like, there's so many of them. You got to find a scent. It's don't don't think don't find a scent necessarily that you like, but go ask women. Hey, what do you think about this? And if they go, ooh, that's hot, like, go for that. You might not like it, but it's not for you. It's for the girls. So, um, oh, your teeth. You you brush your teeth, and um, you know, go to the dentist, get a teeth cleaning. You just make yourself as attractive as you can. You know, lose a lot of body fat so that you have a a chin and a jaw line. You know, if you look at some of my older pictures, when I get fat, my face looks like this, and it basically looks like I'll have a I'll have a chin, but my jaw will disappear. And I've been working out a lot now, and it's like now you can see a chin and a jaw, which is great. So anyway, so you guys are hanging out at your house. Nothing you're doing is creeping her out. Like, you're an attractive guy. She feels comfortable. You guys can get it on. Okay? So, yeah, it did take you, like, two years to get to that point. But now you have all these systems in place. You got paycheck coming in. 
You've been going to the to the gym, so you got the the muscles. You got your uh, you know your Instagram or your in, any kind of social media that you're on is starting to get more followers because you're putting high quality content out there, great pictures. You're putting good posts, share some memes, whatever you're doing. You're getting a, a nice following. So when she goes on your social media, she's like, okay, he's a cool, respectable guy. He's got you know, I can see pictures of him hanging out with his friends. I can see like this is this is good like she, if she shows her girlfriend that yeah like this is this guy i'm seeing she's proud of it girls aren't gonna want to show you off if you're not a catch they're not gonna look at the they're not gonna pull up your instagram and go wow look at this guy i'm dating he's got five followers and no pictures he doesn't even have a profile picture girls are just like what the f they would be like what the fuck is that okay like you got to be the man so anyway let's keep going down the road a little bit the next year you know, you're working at FedEx, UPS, I don't know, Amazon or whatever. Hopefully you got a rate. Maybe now you're at like $25 an hour, you know, after your three-year journey. You're more jacked. You've had sex with a couple more women. You're getting good at this game. You're real smooth and comfortable at approaching women. And now you're working on your own business. You're, you know, you're starting to create your own products or you're getting into like real estate or something like that. Maybe you took out a loan and were able to buy a house and flip the house and make uh, five grand that month or ten grand. Or maybe you're like myself, like an author, and you put your first uh, book online. And now let's say that product is starting to make you passive residual income. What I refer to in my book, Unlimited Wealth, as multiple sources of income. Like for myself, I'm an author, but I'm also a musician, and I'm also several other things. So every single product I have is a multiple source of income like I've got you know several books and each one of those books that I sell makes me a certain amount of money and every time I sell one of my music CDs that brings me money and every time I post a YouTube video and I monetize it like this video right here I get money from that so out of these I have over 10,000 sources of income by the way and so all of these different sources of income, oh, this, this new t-shirt, I have a t-shirt out with my name in the flames, like my logo, which came from a, the soap video that I w went viral in back in the day, they called the classic fire logo. And so every time I sell one of those shirts, whether it's a blue shirt or a black shirt or a kid's shirt or a woman's shirt, or if it's a man's double X, anytime I sell one of those shirts, okay, I make, uh, you know, the shirt sells for 20 bucks, I get three bucks. Anytime my book sells for, you know, $14.95, I get three bucks. So there's three bucks here, three bucks here. Oh, I sold a couple of albums. I made 10 bucks over here. Okay, I sold this. Oh, I sold a coaching package. Like, da 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 All that money is now just coming to me basically when I'm asleep. And I wake up in the morning and I check my alerts and it says, wow, you just received $3. Wow, you just received $3. $30. You just received $99. So every day I'm getting these little ding, 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 little alerts. So money's coming in. So at this point, if you follow what I'm doing, um, that's just one way to do it. You could do it 10 levels up and be flipping houses and making, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars per day. Or you can own apartment complexes and, and make millions of dollars a day. It just depends how much money you want to make. But let's just say you're doing it my way. So now you're at the point where you've got passive income coming in and you don't have to work for it. So now you can keep working your job at UPS or you can quit your job because you have money just coming into you because you have several products out, which frees you up basically to go to the gym even more and get more jacked and have more time to go out to nightclubs and talk to women. So fast forward again through this journey, four or five years down the road, you're fucking jacked. The only time you need to go to the gym now is just to maintain your figure. So once or twice a week and you're good. You don't have to work a job anymore because you've got multiple sources of income that are paying you money. So basically at that point, all you have to do is approach women. Or, like I said, at that point, you're now the man. You could probably move out of your little studio apartment into a one bedroom or two bedroom or even maybe buy a house, depending on what you want to do and what your goals are, you know, and um, you could upgrade from your, you know, your old Honda Civic now to like a new car like I just did. I just upgraded to the Mercedes from, from my old fucking whip and 
at that point, now the girls are coming to you. Now you don't have to go out and use stupid pickup lines like asking them, hey, do you guys think 6 9 is hot? You don't have to do that stupid shit anymore. You don't have to do any of the gimmicky bullshit in order to get laid. Now you've become that high value man and then the girls are just like, why wouldn't I want to date him? You know, the whole, the, what, you're, what you're doing is you're, you're eliminating all of the ways for her to say no. So when she finally looks at you, she can't say no. She can't not go out with you. She can't not fuck you because you are that high value man and sh women are attracted to high value men. So you've taken five years to become that guy. You've gone from over here, you've gone from you over here to you over here. That's you 2.0, the new you. You've become the bigger, better version of yourself. You're not the guy anymore who's living with mommy in the basement playing World of Warcraft who's overweight, who's got like all these zits and doesn't know how to take care of himself, you're now that guy, the guy that women want. You become that guy and you have the lifestyle, that attractive lifestyle that women want to be a part of. They're like, wow, that guy's the man and I want to be the woman behind the man. So you're also on social media, so you're also doing fun things. Remember I said health, wealth, relationships, and lifestyle. So you've been building this this lifestyle, what I created right now is a little entrepreneur lifestyle, but stuff, stuff you can also add in is, is other elements of lifestyle, like a fun part of the lifestyle, like going rock climbing, going skydiving, doing interesting, going river rafting, going canoeing, going hang gliding, going parasailing, going on uh, vacations, becoming a world traveler. So you're adding all this into your lifestyle point. So when you go on Instagram, and you're upgrading. You're, you're you're uploading a new picture of you. Yeah, I went to Hawaii this last week, and we stayed at uh, you know this hotel. These are some awesome pictures of Hawaii. Look at the blue water. We went surfing. And now you've got pictures of you in Hawaii with a surfboard with some beautiful Hawaiian women. Put that on your Instagram. Then you know a couple months later you go to I don't know Ibiza and you go party there. Maybe you go there on a on, and you go on a cruise or something like that. Put some pictures of you on your cruise or put some pictures of you in, in your hotel in Ibiza and at the party or whatever. Send it to your Instagram. Girls are looking through your Instagram and oh my god, like this guy's like a world traveler. He's going to all these exotic places. Fuck, if I was his girlfriend, I could be going to these places with him. Wow, and that gets him thinking, like, hmm. Fuck, I need to hook I need to DM this guy right now. Next thing you know, you've got girls blowing you up on your Instagram going, hey, like. I'm going to be in town next weekend. Like, do you want to hang out? Da, da, da. Now you've become that guy. Now the girls are like, oh, I want him. Now you're the guy who's in high demand. And pretty soon you get all these girls hitting you up. And you're like, whoa, ladies, like, there's only one of me and there's 20 of you. Like, I mean, now I have options. So instead of just going for any piece of pussy that I could get because I'm desperate, now I can start choosing. Out of these 20 girls, this girl's like a 6, and this girl's a 7, this girl's an 8, this girl's an 8, 5, and this girl's a 9. Well, I'm going to set up dates with these hotties right here, and well, you guys you guys be on the waiting list. We'll, we'll put you in the queue. I'll, I'll run through you eventually, but I'm not too worried. I'm trying to focus on the hotties. Now you're a man with options, and that's a good place to be. Now you're hitting up the hottest girls, and you're like, and you're you're actually living that lifestyle. You really are jacked. You've got money in the bank, got your own place, you got a nice car, you're going on vacations, and now you're like, yeah, what's up? Like, yeah, we should definitely hang out. You know, oh, is this Jessica? Yeah, well, um, you know, me and a couple friends, you know, we're going on a cruise this weekend. We're we're gonna do a go down to Cabo for a couple of days. It's gonna be pretty nice. Welcome to a roll through for sure. Yeah, I got you. I got you, girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? Now, now you're the man. Now these girls are fucking coming to you, giving you the sex that you deserve. And I mean, you do, you you deserve it. You worked hard for it. Five years in this game. And now you're cleaning up. Now you're cleaning house. And um, and that's how you do it. It's really just about putting all those systems in place. And once you get to the point in the game, now you're starting to get those ROIs. You know, the return on your investment, all your time effort, 
energy, your blood, sweat, tears, everything you put into this game, now you're getting the payment, you're getting the paycheck. It's like you did your hard two weeks busting your ass at McDonald's scrubbing a toilet and it sucks, it's hard work, but then that paycheck comes in. Okay. Yeah, it sucked when I was when I was busting my ass in all the gym, getting these trying to get these muscles. It sucked, you know, working the job, trying to get the money so that I could pay the rent for my apartment. It sucked going to all these different dealerships, working with these fucking car salesmen, trying to trying to get a lease on a fucking car. It sucked. Like all the times I had to get on my hands and knees and scrub my floor to vacuum and make this place clean and I had to read all these books on game and I had to watch fucking Ryan Johns and Mrs. videos on how to pick up chicks but whew, it's all worth it now because now you've got fucking girls that are eights, nines, and tens that are riding your motherfucking cock and you're like now I'm the man now I'm a fucking superstar because that's what it feels like when you fuck a new girl it's like a women, women are, you know, women are conquests, women are trophies when you when you fuck a new girl and you get to put that new trophy on your wall, here's the Jessica trophy. I hit that shit. Bow down. I'm the motherfucking man. I just fucked this fucking hot bitch. I feel like a fucking superstar, right? You feel the fireworks going off inside your brain. You're like, dude, I fucking hit that shit. That chick's so fine, and she sucked my dick. That chick is so fucking fine, and I fucked her. Feels so good. Put that fucking trophy on your wall. And... The more trophies you get, the more success that you get, you know, like they say, it's fucking success breeds confidence. The more trophies, the more times you fuck girls, the more successes that you get, the more confident that you're going to become because you become assured of yourself. Dude, look at all my results. Look at all the girls I fucked. I'm not thinking I'm the man. I know I'm the man because look at all these trophies. I fucked Jessica, I fucked Melanie, I fucked Jillian, I fucked da 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 da. Like I fucked all these fuck. I got rows and rows of trophies. Fuck. So I must be the man, right? Because I've got the results. You can't tell me I'm not the man because I have the history. And you just, you feel so good about yourself. You're like, fuck, like, dude, I'm so dope. I fucked all these hot bitches. I'm a, I'm a fucking superstar. It just feels so empowering. And, you know, I want you guys to be able to feel like that. It's it's just, you, you don't, I remember when I started in this game, like I was that guy. I was just in a very different situation. I just got out of a divorce and it was a very violent divorce. I got banned from four countries. I got thrown in solitary confinement. I was on drugs. I was homeless on the street. And I ended up in a new city here in Las Vegas. 15 years ago now, living in a, sleeping on a friend's couch, and I had to start the game from fucking ground zero, going out every night with a blue-pilled, soy boy, fucking cuck of society mindset. I, you know, I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, 26 years old, I was overweight, didn't have a job, I was fucking homeless, going out to clubs and trying to talk to girls. Hey girl, what's up? What you doing? What you drinking? Talking like, because I was a gangster. I was from, LA. I was, you know, from L.A. And what you drinking, girl? What you trying to do tonight? Right? They didn't give a fuck about me. They didn't give two squirts of piss. I, I took some girl out to a two hundred dollar dinner at the top of the stratosphere, trying to be nice. Oh, if I buy her this Kobe beef sixty five dollar plate dinner, plus drinks and desserts, like two hundred dollars. I said, well, she's got to have sex with me after that. If, she should know how much I like her. She should know. She should see how nice and what a good guy I am. Guess what? I never saw her again. Two hundred dollars, gone. Waste of my time. Waste of my effort. Waste of my energy. Waste of my money. Didn't get laid. Didn't even nothing. Well, I learned real quick. I said what I'm doing isn't working. So it's time to try something new. So I, you know, I got into the game and. A couple months went by, I practiced, I ended up getting a girlfriend. She was all right. But once I got a taste of what the game could do, I was kind of like, yeah, I can't stop here. It's all or nothing, we gotta go all in. So I broke up with that girl and I just kept going out, learning the game. A Couple months later, boom. All of a sudden, I start hitting this sweet spot. I go from no dates, couldn't get any girls to fucking 
get, I couldn't get laid, couldn't get a make out, couldn't get girls to dance with me at the club. Several months went by, all of a sudden I'm having sex with two to three new girls a week for a long time after that. And that was a good time. That was kind of my prime and pickup in, in 2008, 9, and 10. And yeah, for about those for about those three years, I was just killing the game and I became the top dating coach in Las Vegas and all of a sudden I had over 200 students that were paying me money to teach them what I'm teaching you right now. And it's pretty fucking dope. And then after that, I just kept climbing, climbing to the next level. So even 15 years later, I'm still working on my game. And it's not something that you do for a little while. It's not something that you do nine to five. It's, you know, being a pickup artist is something that you just, you are 24 seven. And it's a, just a lifestyle. So every day that I'm working on my game, this video is me working on my game, putting this out because I'm gonna monetize it and make money off of it. And I know that people are going to feel what the fuck I'm talking about because they know I'm real as fuck. You can check my fucking Wikipedia. You can see any of my other videos that I really am out here living this fucking lifestyle. And I know that people all over the world will watch this video and be like, hey, Ryan, I want you to coach me. I want you to teach me some more of this game. Teach me some more of these techniques. This is where I'm at. I want to get here. How do I do it? Okay, pay me some money and I'll talk. Okay, here's 99, here's two grand, here's five grand, whatever. It, I know that people will respond to this and want to get coaching from me because they can see, like, I'm, I don't teach, this isn't gimmicks. This is scientifically proven techniques. I just gave you the formula. I know I didn't give you, like, the nuances of all the pickup techniques and, you know, saying go to the gym is one thing, but actually telling you, okay, you need to do these certain reps and these certain amount of sets, you need to do, you know, 12, 10, 8, 6. You need to be having, you know, 0.7 to, you know, 1 gram of protein per body weight. And these are the macronutrients that you need for your type of body. I know I didn't give you all the technical specifications. That's what you get when you coach with me. That's where you're going to get coaching in, in terms of health, wealth, relationships, or lifestyle. And that's like that that's when you go buy my book on Amazon and you read 10 steps to success and you go oh okay that's what he's talking about that's what it okay this is how you meditate this is how you visualize oh this is this is the diet and exercise plan for my type of body type oh I didn't know that if I sleep more then I'm gonna have more energy in order to go out and focus and do the things that I want to do which is ultimately gonna lead me to more success with with anything that I want, women, whether it's getting a new job or getting a girlfriend, or da, 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 like it just goes on and on. And that's where the people are paying me the money to get those technical specifications. Or eventually they want to find out, or eventually they're the guy who's getting so good at this and they're like, man, I want to do what you do as a job, Ryan. How did you become a coach? All right, well, sit down and do a coaching session and teach you how to become a coach. Let's teach you how to do sales. Let's teach you how to start, right? How do you publish a book? I mean, that's, that's a fucking couple hour conversation on its own. Ryan, how, how did you publish a book? How did you sit down and write a 400 page book, let alone like 20 400 page books? And how did you get them on Amazon? And how did you connect your, you know, PayPal account to this? And da, 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 da. how did, how did you do all this stuff? Well, that's where coaching comes in. Anyway, this video is getting pretty long. You start to see like, we talked for an hour almost right now and you can see how much information that we got through in an hour. Imagine if you listen to me talk for 10 or 20 hours, imagine then what you would know. But anyway, I, I, I do hope that you guys got some value out of this. I hope that maybe this makes a little more sense. It's just so, from my perspective, being in this game and knowing that it works because I, I lived that life where I couldn't get a date and then I learned this game and I started getting dates and getting results. So I know for a fact that it worked and this game saved my life. You know, I was, I was so angry at the time. I couldn't get laid. You know, I, I, I fucking half-ass slipped my wrist. I was trying to kill myself. I just I couldn't get laid. And there's no point to fucking being alive if I'm busting my ass at a job 40 hours a fucking week, and you know, just doing back-breaking manual labor. And then I'm coming home at night to like girls don't like me, and all I can do is jerk off and fucking cry myself to sleep. Like, what kind of life is that? But like I said, once I learned the game, it changed my life and I started getting fucking laid. And now look where I'm at now, 15 years after that. 
So I know that this stuff works and when people are like, oh, pickup is a scam, it's like, no, no, it's because you don't understand what pickup is. What I just explained to you, that's the game. That's what pickup really is about. The stuff about just approaching women, like I said, using pickup lines or canned openers, dude, that's just the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Okay, the iceberg is big and underneath the water, there's a whole other part to that iceberg and that's the stuff where guys are like, oh, that pickup stuff doesn't work. I tried this pickup line, it doesn't work. And it's like, no, because you, you didn't get the coach, you didn't get the big picture. You know, you're missing a lot of the puzzle pieces. You have to see the whole big picture. You got to understand about placing, putting all those, it's kind of like um, in, re in recording, if you know anything about music, if you think of what's called a patch bay, if you look behind the patch bay, you got to plug in all the little wires in the front of the patch bay, it just looks nice and clean, but in the back of it, there's all these like, wires that you're plugging in from the patch bay to the mixing board to the microphone to the guitar. And you, all these wires are going like crazy directions. And it looks like a big mess, but it's all about really plugging in those wires so that you can get the result. And at the end of the day, so your microphone, for example, is the wire is going to the patch bay. And then from the patch bay, you got a bunch of wires that are gonna give it a little reverb, a little echo. Another wire is going into a box that gives it delay, and then it comes back from the delay out to the amplifier, and then from the amplifier to you know, out, out to the to the big to the to the monitor mixing board, and then from the monitor mixing board to the front of house mixing board, and finally, the person in the audience, all they hear is the music. They don't understand the the process of plugging in all the wires and all the technical details of how that music is being played to them at a concert and it's the same thing with pickup when you're really good at this game it's like let's say you watched me in field and, and i was like okay i'm gonna go try to talk to that girl and you saw me go over there and get her number and i'm like see that's how you do it a guy who doesn't know the intricacies of the game and all the techniques to him it looks like I just walked over, had a conversation, and got her number. He's like, well, you didn't really do anything. You just talked to her. And I said, well, that's where you don't understand. See, there's, a, there's an old saying that says, like, pickup artists, we work hard to look like we're not working. Because everything that I did that to you just looked like a casual conversation, to me was a calculated process. To me was walking up to the girl at like a 45 degree angle and I moved my hand a certain way and I did this and I had and I was leaning back and I was speaking dominantly and confidently and clearly my hands weren't in my pockets I was you know pumping out my chest a little bit my neck was exposed so I'm showing no fear in terms of when I'm talking to the target and she can see that I'm a dominant alpha male that's controlling the situation, controlling the frame, controlling the interaction. And I'm saying certain things that are creating like interest and intrigue in the target's mind to the point where she's like, huh, like this guy seems interesting. His body language is good. He's dressed good. He smells good. So when I go for the number, when I tell her, by the way, you know, I got to get going. I'm with my friends. You know, it's boys night out. I shouldn't be talking to you girls, but you know, I, you know. Look, I don't know if you're single, I don't know if you're married, I don't know what's going on in your life, you could be in love, anything like that, but look, I just thought you were kind of cute, I am having a pool party barbecue at my place on Tuesday, you and your girlfriends are welcome to come, you know, let's trade information, and the girl goes, yeah, it sounds like a good idea, are you 702? Yeah, what's the rest? I get her number real quick, see, everything that I'm doing is rehearsed, smooth, I've done it thousands of times, it just flows off the tongue, it's... It, this is an art form. You practice and you practice and you practice just like playing a guitar. It's like a musician trying to learn how to play a guitar. You know, when you, when you first play a guitar, it's going to be clunky. You don't even know how to tune it. You're like, uh, you just, dar, 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 like, dar. you're strumming the strings. You're like, what the fuck? I don't know what a fret bar is. After a couple lessons of learning how to do your fucking scales, you say, oh, I get it. When I press the string here, and I pluck it, I get a note. When I move up the fretboard, I get another note. I get another note. Oh, okay. It's just like a piano, if you know how to play piano, but instead of white key, black key, it's little a dot and then a no dot, and oh, okay. And if I want to play a chord, just like on a piano, I skip over that one. Oh, that's a bar chord. Right at the beginning, it's kind of weird, but pretty soon, now you're jamming. 
couple weeks later, now you're playing a song. Do 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 do. Now it starts making sense. Pretty soon, now you start learning how to play with other people. Okay, you're playing the bass, you're playing the drums. Wow, now we're jamming. Now we're actually making music. This starts to make sense. Pickup is the same way. When you first start approaching women, you're going to be very clunky. You're going to be like, "What was I supposed to say? Is six nine what?" After you do it a couple times, then you're like, "Hey, girls, real quick, super ran. Everything's going to be just like polished, and you're going to be like, "Look." I can't stay long, I'm here with friends, but I gotta ask you guys this quick question. I need a female opinion. Do you guys know the rapper 6 9 You know, rainbow hair? Do you guys think he's hot? Okay, get this, like, boom. Like, everything just becomes smooth. Ha ha, you guys are so funny, you guys make the exact same facial expressions. Are you guys best friends? Have you guys ever taken the best friends test? Okay, get this. By the way, having a pool party, my place, Tuesday, you and your girlfriends are welcome to come. We could use a wild card, blah, blah, blah. Like, all the lines pretty much, they just become a part of you. The same way that, like, after a person plays guitar for five years, you hand him a guitar, he just knows, tune it, and he just plays. The music just comes out of him. It's just... It just happens. It's like magic. Some guys will even go to the extent that they, they say, oh, game doesn't work. It's all about looks. Well, if, if, if that was the case, then before I had game, I would have got laid. If that was the case, then there'd be a lot of guys who are good looking that are getting laid. They don't have problems with women, but I know a lot of guys who are good looking and they don't get girls. Girls just don't approach. I mean, they... Girls will approach you if you're that guy who's like a 10 out of a 10 and she can't help herself. But guys that are like 7 and below, 8 and below, even guys that are like 8s, like a guy who's like really good looking, she'll still look from afar and go, wow, that guy is hot, I'd fuck him. But she's not going to make the approach. And if that guy who's good looking on the outside but on the inside is not confident and doesn't know how to talk to women, doesn't know how to approach them, He's just going to stand afar and go, wow, she's hot. I wish she would approach me. And he's look, and she's looking at him going, why doesn't he talk to me? And he's looking at her going, fuck, I, I'm a cool guy. Why doesn't she like me? And guess what? Nobody gets fucking laid. And even though he's better looking, now you get a guy like me who's maybe average looking, but who has game, rolls up on that same girl. Hey, guys. Real quick. Do you guys know the rapper 6 9 I start talking to her. Next thing you know, I got her number. Even though I'm not as good looking as the guy who's an 8, maybe I'm only a 6. And he's an 8, but he doesn't know how to approach. So now an average guy rolls up. I know how to approach. Now I'm getting laid. It's just how it is. Most girls aren't going to approach. You have to learn how to approach. It's just part of the process. And then there's the other thing where guys are saying, well... What about Tinder, Bumble, online dating? Like, shouldn't you shouldn't you be doing that? I say, yeah, I do. I mean, why not do both? Elon Musk had a had a funny quote. I liked, it, you know, because he's trying to colonize Mars, and people are like, why do you want to go colonize another planet when this planet needs fixing? Why can't we, why can't we just focus on fixing Earth? And Elon Musk is like, why don't we do both? I love that response. Same thing with online dating versus approaching in real life. You know, this is a new game. We're, we're on the next level right here. Like, this is 2020 going into 2021. So why not be doing both? Why not have a Tinder and a Bumble and a Hinge and a Plenty of Fish, and OkCupid, and all these other fucking sites? Why not do those maybe uh, in the morning when the club is closed and also learn how to approach women in real life? So you can go out. If you're at a coffee shop and you're getting coffee at Starbucks, you see a pretty girl, you know how to approach. She's right there. Go up and approach her and get her number. Then when you walk home and you're drinking your coffee, you can open your phone, go on Tinder, swipe right on a couple girls. Pop, 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 pop. Maybe they'll call you back, maybe they won't, but at least you put it out there. Then at night, you go to the nightclub, start talking to girls, approach them. When you come home from the nightclub, if you, if you, if you didn't get a girl that night, Back on Tinder, swipe right again, ta, ta, 
do your 100 swipe rights, pop, 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 pop. Maybe some of them write you back, some of them don't. Next morning, you're waking up, you go over to Starbucks. Oh, the barista's, the barista's fucking looking good. Hey, while you're getting me that coffee, real quick, do you think the rapper 6 9 is hot? Okay, this is random, but like my little niece, okay, hit on her, hit on the barista. Maybe you get a number. If not, go sit down, drink your coffee, go back on Tinder, swipe right a hundred times. Drink your coffee, you know, then go out to the nightclub and just do both. Get put, put as many options out there as you can. Sometimes girls on um, my Tinder will write back and they're like, wait, if you're a dating coach, how come you're using online dating? And like, I, I, I just try to avoid the question, but I mean, in real life, it's like, yeah, because I want to get fucking laid. Doesn't mean that I don't go out to nightclubs and get laid. Doesn't mean that I don't go meet girls at fucking grocery stores like Whole Foods or Walmart or Target and get laid. I do all of the above. I put out as much as I can because at the end of the day, it's just a numbers game. You know, if you talk to the more girls that you talk to, the more girls you have a chance of actually getting with. At the end of the day, it's like basically creating a sales funnel. You know, I'll use this cup for an example. It's much wider than it is at the bottom. It's a funnel, right? Like that. When you're playing the numbers game, you're going to get lots of girls' numbers. Yeah, I'll give you my number. Yeah, I'll give you my Instagram. Yeah, I'll give you my Snapchat, right? But that's where you start funneling it down, right? Because all of a sudden, the next day, the girl was already talking to some dude, and now when I call her back, she's got a boyfriend. She's unavailable. This girl flaked. This was a wrong number, right? So all those, let's say 200 numbers that I got in, a, in one week, I got, let's say 200 numbers. By the end of the week, you know, maybe only 20 of them are actually girls that might actually want to meet up. And out of those 20, maybe only five of them are DTF, down to fuck. And after I talked to them, maybe we went out to coffee with one of the... The, the, the rest of those 195 girls, those numbers, they don't, they don't mean anything. Now I'm down to five. This girl, I went out to coffee. She was boring. This girl, like, we went out, grabbed a coffee, and, like, we're going to go on a second date. Okay. This girl, I called her up, and she was just DTF. Her boyfriend just broke up with her. She was depressed. I said, come over and watch a movie. I fucked her. Right? And this girl was kind of like, she was boring. And this girl, we're going to, she was busy. And then I was busy the next week. And then, you know, we're kind of playing a phone tag thing. She, I'm just still texting her. So now out of those 200 girls, I'm down to three. I fucked this one. And this one, I'll probably fuck her on the next date. But each week, you just keep getting like, you know, 50 new numbers or 200 new numbers. And you just funnel it down. Weed out the week and sort out the ones that are DTF close them and get those trophies build your score you'll get better at this game and after time then um you'll have the skill to start approaching even hotter and even hotter girls it's it's like a game it's like zelda or super mario brothers or whatever video game metaphor you want you you start on level one and you work your way up so if you're not confident talking to beautiful like the real hot girls then start talking to girls that are fours and fives, that are a little overweight, that are a little older, that have, you know, they're, they're not as attractive as the hot girls, but you get used to talking to them, you get used to grabbing a coffee with them, and you get used to getting them back to your place and having sex with them, and then you move up, let's say, to a girl who's a five. Then you move up to a girl who's a six. Let me, let me explain what that means. When I'm talking about a girl who's a five, that means she's just kind of there. She's not attractive, She's not unattractive, she's just very plain, she's just there. A girl who's a four is kind of like, you look at her, she's a little fatter, she's a little nastier, and you're like, she's not attractive. But it's good practice, it's good warm-up. A girl who's a six, that's a girl who you would consider, she's cute, I'd fuck her, she's fuckable. If I drank three or four beers, yeah, I'd fuck her, right, that's a six. A girl who's a seven, yeah, she's good looking, she's attractive, she's a pretty girl. A girl who's an eight, that's a girl that you would class. She's beautiful. She's a model. She's model material. A girl who's like a nine, gorgeous. Drop, like, dr she's drop dead gorgeous. She's, she's insanely hot. And then a girl who's a 10, 
is just a girl who's like asymmetrically perfect. She's like, that's your ideal girl. And then there's what we call the mythical 11, which there's no such thing. And most girls who you think are tens, which is a mind fuck, they're not actually tens. They're more like sevens or eights who know how to put on makeup and they know how to dress and, you know, they have like a pump up bra or whatever like that. But if you take a girl who you think is a 10 and then douse her with water, you know, all her makeup comes off, her bra, you know, she, she takes off her pump up bra and now she's flat chested and you, you, you kind of look at her closer and you're like, oh, she's actually got a weird mole on her back or something like that. And she doesn't shave her arms like what the fuck she's got some if you look at her close she's kind of maybe has some peach fuzz even on her face and you're like dude you don't whack like she's not actually not a 10 she's not perfect she's not flawless she's not this angel that you think she is she's just an average girl who knows how to make herself look really good or if you look at it on Instagram anything on on social media you should know is fake especially with Instagram girls are using filters 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 um hiding any sort of imperfection you know that's why I love the Paris filter on Instagram because I have blemishes um, I have insecurities and like my face isn't perfect if you look up close there's there's like a mole over here or whatever and but when I use that Paris filter on Instagram psh, dude I look 10 years younger my face is clear it 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 makes you look great and um, women can use the Paris filter save it use this use it again if they want you know, they can use Snapchat filters to make themselves look much more attractive or make themselves look like a fucking cat or whatever. And it makes guys go, oh, wow, she's so fine. But in real life, they don't actually look like that. So you can be fooled by the, the makeup. The girls that use makeup, it's kind of funny. I mean, I, I appreciate girls that use makeup. I think it looks great. But at the same time, you got to understand that it's not real. She doesn't really look like that. It's like a guy who is talking to a girl. I, I like to call it like, is using that player game like yeah girl yeah I got that Lamborghini out front even though he's driving like a Honda or something like that or he's like yeah girl I'm the, I'm the boss I own this nightclub and the girl's like oh wow you're a baller like she gets attracted that's like a guy using pickup pickup girls use makeup guys use pickup same same thing we use pickup to make ourselves look more attractive I don't really care you know, I don't even have a niece, first of all, that, that thinks 6'9 is hot, but it's a cool opener. It's a good way to just walk up to girl, girls and go, hey, girls, real quick. Okay, that's not me. That's that's pickup. That's makeup that I'm using to make myself look like a confident, smooth guy with swagger who's just, like, talkative and, you know, extroverted or whatever. You could replace the, you know, hey, girls, what do you guys think of 6'9"? You could replace that with anything. You could be, you, you could just go straight on and be like, hey, girls, real quick. Look, I saw you from over there, completely random and out of the blue, but I thought you were absolutely adorable, and I had to come over here and meet you. My name's Ryan, you know. How's your guys' night going? You could, you, could, you could replace the words with anything, but it's more about that swagger and the way that I'm doing it and the confidence behind it. The girls aren't really paying attention to the words anyway. As you're talking, she's kind of judging you, like, how tall is this guy? Ooh, that looks like a nice watch. Is it a real Rolex or is it a Folex? Huh. Those shoes. Mm, yeah, they're shined. Okay. Like the girl's assessing you in different ways than what you think. She's not really paying attention to the words that you're saying. She's like more like, okay, like, hmm, is this guy the alpha? Is this guy the man? Mm, do I want this guy talking to me? Uh, and if you kind of like, women are basically that thing at the airport, you know, the metal detector, when you walk through it and they're just basically assessing you, next, next, oh, I put you in the maybe, oh, absolutely, right? They're just that metal detector. It's, it's, I think that's a great analogy for, for what a woman is. You know, women are the, women are the gatekeepers to sex. They get to choose whose genes are going to be in the next generation or not. And if you got it, then you got it and if you don't then you're fucked or you got to work on it in order to get back into that other category to get through that metal detector fuck this video could go on and on and on i could do this all fucking day and that's why guys get that diamond package with me where they, they get eight hours of this information to really get all of the secrets and stuff like that so i don't know consider you know, check it out, my other stuff, and you could um, see what else I got. I'm going to cut this short, but if you like this video, if you like this style of video, leave it a thumbs up and uh, drop me some comments in the box below. And uh, like I said, I read all the comments, try to get back with people. 
Subscribe to my channel for more. Check out the playlist that says, uh, just type in Ryan Johnson's Master Pickup Artist, and there's like almost 200 of these videos on there. So lots of stuff, lots of value for guys there. And um, definitely uh, follow me on Instagram, at Johnsimus. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. Stay up. Be safe. You know, stay up. Stay grinding. Stay shining. Keep sergeant. You know, get out there. Talk to these women. Get into the game. And um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.